Welcome to the Balanced Developer Diaries number 38. And today we're going to go over um, a new uh, feature in Balance 6.3 that was recently just released. I think it was uh, last week. Uh, the new Valence Assistant um, AI that's embedded in certain areas as of right now within Nitro App Builder. I hope you want to add anything to that, Sean. No, I mean, this is our first pass. Um, you know, I imagine as uh, we see more use cases, we'll, you know, we'll continue to integrate, integrate it in different spots, maybe not only in App Builder, but throughout the port. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, let's get started. Uh, thinking data source first. All right. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, there's this little floating like button up here that's just to help me create my data source. This could be used too to help you adjust a current existing data source. We're in a new one, so it's just we're working through to create and create a new data source. So we're just going to click it. First thing it's going to ask is if you want to add any uh, of your file definitions. So we're going to uh, what products, Sean? You think? Add some files. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's add a few tables. So products, products. Uh, we'll add an order header and an order uh, detail. Xco, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And okay, so we're just expand those. Sorry. Go ahead. If if you were to expand those, just yeah. just so we get an idea of what's in there. So we've got you know orders with the products, and there's a a date that the order was entered, and um. And then an order header, which has a customer number. And okay. Mm -hmm. Well, not that the customer number is even relevant here, but product. There we go. And if there's fields within your table or tables that you you definitely don't even want to look at work with at all, you can just un unselect them. By default, any table that you add, it's just selecting any fields that are in there. Um, just getting the uh the you know the basic information, the name, the description, the type of field. You just can click continue. So we've just entered three tables. And here you, we kind of give some information like an example, um, but here is just where you're gonna just uh, explain of what, you, what you're looking to do um, with those current tables that we just entered. All right. Uh, what do you want? What do you think we want to do here? Hey, Sean. Sean. Hey. You're you're breaking up. Oh. How about now? Yep. You're good now. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, I was saying you can be as specific or as vague as, as you. Man, you're <laughs> yeah. We lost you again. Well, let me just see if he can get back on. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry. Okay. What's going on? Anyhow, yeah. I was saying you could be as specific or as vague as you want. Right. Right. Yeah, um, I mean, more like more information is not bad at all, but you can definitely, like you said, be vague. But in this case, maybe we'll be pretty vague. Yeah, like if we just want to like group group product sales by or, or summarize product sales by year or something like that, like with its. There you go. A year, and customer. Sure. So this is the part that's like watching paint dry, but yes. <laughs> so here it's coming back with a suggested SQL statement based on what we've stated using the table information that we gave them, gave it prior to. Um, you can simply just hit paste 
And here's the statement. And there we go. So if you know you you could also take this same statement and you know if 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 yeah if he clicks here the statement is loaded by default and maybe we'd say um I don't know I'm trying to think of a good uh a good a good thing to change here or let's just say um I mean this is a really dumb example but you know I don't like the column name sales year but that's not a good example um, my point is, is you can you can it's change. Just, it, right. it knows it knows the statement now, and you can uh, you know talk in the context of your statement. Um, so what field I would just add. for example maybe How say about by year and month now. Ooh, let's try it. <laughs> Thank you. Was that Bob? So there we go. All right. Maybe another good example is is showing uh, like a, a broken state. Yeah, let's do a broken. Um, Maybe we'll just use our, some, you know, yeah, demo C mask, our favorite table. Sales, I think it is. And then CNA, I think that's what I spell CYT. That looks right. Sales. Okay. So we're expecting an error. It's an invalid statement. So I'm just going to take this code, error code, and I'm just going to say, uh, can you fix this statement? Error. Yep, there we go. Indeed. Now, obviously, that was a simple example. Yeah. <clears throat> it would apply to a you know a, comp a complicated example as well. We could also uh um since we're in data source and format and format the address like so adding demo CMAS. Maybe not include line two. We have two yeah. fields. Exclude line, line two, two if you look at empty. There you go. Okay, so it gave us, it broke it out into individual fields, but now maybe yeah. if we talk back to it and say, you know, consolidate the address fields into one column. Including. You know, and it's not always perfect. There will be mistakes. Nice. There we go. Nice. Um, that's data source. I mean, we're just showing like, you know, quick examples, how you just go back and forth with it. Is there any questions or, and feel free, like, during this one, whoever's on, if feel free to jump in, ask questions or whatever. This is, you know, we don't have we don't have a super set. Yeah, <laughs> we've got an idea of what we want to show, but you know, you guys right. might have we have we have a videos already of showing all this, so it's kind of like yeah, it's kind of open form too. If anyone has any questions, but this is yeah, I got a question for you. Okay, Sweet. can we do a subtotal by year in that in that first example where you had done the sub subtotal by or you done the uh, group by um, year and month? But what if I wanted a subtotal for the year? Subtotal for the year. So you're talking about when we were working with products. CO header. Yeah, CO. C 
CO detail. Okay, I want. Yeah, well, maybe just yeah in in English. How would you want it? We'll see what we get. I mean, what we want a group by, we want. I want a group by month and year with a subtotal on the year. And we want a group product sales, right? Yes. What was that? Group product sales by month. Yes. Group by month and year. But group product sales, right? Just so right. what sales. by month and year with a subtotal of the year. Let's see what we get. And then I have a follow up question as well. I don't think uh, let's, I don't let's think see. Oh, is roll up valid. Yeah, roll up's not valid. Okay, but now we can go back and say roll up is yeah. not valid. Even extract, I think, is not valid, right? And actually, that is my follow-up question. What does it do when it doesn't understand you? So let's uh, let's do this one more time. Let's cancel this just to be sure. Can you paste that statement in there, Johnny, and just? I don't know, for some reason, it seems like it didn't have access to it. And then just let it know that roll up is not valid. <laughs> yeah, so if it doesn't understand, it'll say that. Yeah, it didn't. Okay, so I think we extract is not. I oh yeah, extract the next thing. I don't think that's fair, right? Let's try it. I don't know. I don't think so. So we got rid of the roll up. I think mm. it's not on extract. Yeah, let's maybe let's do the same thing. I don't know if it's doing what we want here. No, it's not anymore because we didn't remember that chat. Oh, I see. I see. Let's give it one more try. Should we do one more try? <laughs> so this will be a longer developer diary. You know, so as you know, as as we use this more and other people use it more, you know, I think. It, you know, for example, we'll probably want to mention in here, like, FYI, you know, do not use the roll up or extract functions. Right. I mean, we should probably. Um, well, we and this is stuff that, you know, will eventually more and more just get built in. Right. Um, drain it. So it was group product sales by year and month. Ron, was it Ron? Month. Um, yeah, it was me. That, I was just curious if we yes. could do a subtotal by year, you know, having detail lines from by month and then a subtotal by year. Yes. And, and if you can't, it's fine. I just, no. I was just curious. I think it can't. Let's just try it one more time with subtotal, with subtotal by year. And then maybe year. Yeah. And, you know, do not yeah. use roll up or extract functions.
maybe just say order year, order year needs to be, or wait, because <laughs> we want a total, we want a column that has the total sales by year, but we also want year and month. And then, okay, so total sales, total sales should be for the, for the year. For the, for the year. For the year of the accompanying record or something. I think it was that, right? For the entire year of the record. Of the order year column. Total sales should be the total for the year of the order year column. Order your column. So hopefully this gets it. But you know, as you can see, sometimes it's going to take a little back and forth. Uh, I'm confident we could. You can get it eventually, Ron. I mix maybe where our maybe our our, our state. That's, that's fine. I was just curious. Uh, this is a learning uh, yeah. experience for us to see, you know, how you would communicate with it. Yeah. And now a follow up question: Is there any AI for like creating forms or anything like that, or is that? Um... Yes. Well, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to show that. Actually, we'll show that next. You want to do the forms next? Yeah. Let's but before before we move off of uh, <clears throat> this, you had trouble with some uh, uh, functions that weren't available in the IBM I SQL. Do you think that um, uh, AI would have understood if you just said for SQL I or something like that? We already are pro we already kind of are training it for DB two four hundred explicitly, but as you can see, sometimes it doesn't adhere to what we we tell it. Okay. So we're already telling it that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's show the form. All right. So here we just have um this is just VB apps record. VB apps yeah. file, which is your apps record. So this this record represents an application in the portal administry, you know, in in, in the portal. So oh. up top. I don't know, just labels as you see fit. So we're just saying, just shh, set it all up for us. Oh, yeah. We're, we're telling it what the context you know, like, is. It, I guess while this is going on, like in a real world example, like, all right, I've got um, th this thing's, you know, order information. You, you just kind of explain like, hey, I'm displaying, uh, you know, this order information or order detail information. I need you to lay it out. Uh, as you see fit, and it should go through and do that. So it's this 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 form part is great at organization. Yeah. You know, sometimes you know we're creating forms that you know might have you know, of 20, 30 fields, and it's just kind of a pain to to at least get a, a jump start on, on organizing things. So as you could see in here, it's kind of it gives us you know we don't it, it'll give explanations of why it's doing what. But then at the bottom, you saw that whole, like, you'll see a JSON format. Not that we need to really, you know, we don't need anything to do. We don't need to take anything with that, but we use it in App Builder to apply this. So if you click that apply button, now it's going to lay out the form. So now we're fine. So it did so a good job of, of yeah, group grouping it. Additional information. Maintenance. Obviously, this data here is not great. There's a lot, you know, the, the app record itself, there's a lot of fields that aren't valid always. Right. We just wanted to grab a quick table that had, you know, more mm -hmm. than our demo CMAS. Yeah, doing that layout, showing many fields being laid out. So then automatically seeing our field groups. So, Ron, hopefully that answered your question about forms. Yes, it does. 
what if we wanted to create a CRUD application? Okay, yeah. And like, what would you do to the form differently? Yeah, like, how would you how would you ask the AI? I want to create a a CRUD app on this table. Yeah, that is not that is not available as of now. You know, right now, every all all of the all, all of the integration is within the data source, and then some individual widgets. Um, ultimately, you know, yeah. I like where you're going. <laughs> we, you know, we've talked about that as well. Like, you know, it would be from you know from like from the app section. Hey, create me an application that does X Y Z with the following tables. But we're not there yet. But it is a statement of direction. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. All right. Um, Any questions know. on the form? This one just saved like really saves a ton of time, especially if you have forms with a ton of stuff. And and you'll find too. I mean, I think the data sources yeah. save a ton of time. I mean, I know we probably didn't do a great job of examples in there, but. Um, like when I'm using it, you know, we, we, we've been using it a lot ourselves, creating internal applications or our, our pro or other customer projects. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm starting to feel like I can't get away without it. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah, go to tiles. That's yeah. Let's do tiles. Tiles. Do tiles. So let's just do it off the customer. So, so maybe, and everyone's familiar with like might be familiar if not it's just you know we're at the end of the day you're just showing information um listing information but the tile is a little different because that could be markup could be html right um however we're just gonna just see how this does it so uh would be very big on this displaying display So you've got a decent looking, you know, tile for your customer information, just with that little quick thing, you can go you know, back maybe with, with colors or, you know, whatever you'd like, I guess, to do. Maybe we give it a try. If you go to section one and say, uh, um, that, uh, you know, year to date sales should you know, make it, show it as money <laughs> and disregard the max sales, uh, column wait you wanted what i don't do not show the max sales that max sales column is just you know you can, uh -oh. you can dictate what you what columns you want to show yeah you can say exactly what you want to show So, I mean, I guess, you know, you could, like you said, you could be more specific and, you know, get different layouts or however you want, well, whatever, based on whatever information you're, you're trying to show. Is most HTML markup available? Wait, yes. like, all, all, like all, bold and, and all of it's uh, available. oh yeah. Yeah. Like we could just say like, uh, cause it is doing the bold already, but I don't know. Um, uh, what are we showing here? Um, Uh, just gonna just say make the sales
So you can just go back and forth and adjust or. Yeah. And oftentimes you might just use it for a start and then, you know, modify the HTML on your own if you wanted to. Like, right. Risk. It's yeah. probably overkill to just tell it to make it green, but you hopefully get the point. Yeah, yeah, definitely will get, especially getting you in a like a, a to good kick you off, good starting position. All right, that's tiles. Um, the grid render, oh, well, grid renderers, right? Yeah, let's go to grid. So I don't know how often you guys are, you know, using the custom formatting. Um, but this, you know, we and we we field a lot of questions for custom formatting because you know you're getting into JavaScript, HTML markup, um, and we're hoping that this should alleviate a lot of those questions now. So uh, we've we'll got just... the date sales and we got this max sales. And here we're just going to show an example where we want to we want to we want to show the percentage of max sales, you know, based off the uh, based off the year to date sales, and show a progress bar below it beneath that value. Yeah. see what it looks like maybe we could even take it a step further if, if um, you know color code the progress bar based off of the uh, percentage as it gets um, you know yeah color code the progress based off the percentage You know, if we wanted to, you could say, you know, like if it's, these if it's colors, like, this percent or whatever. But I think just let let it let it do yeah. it on it. Like, but you know, you might say if it's ninety to one hundred percent, make it red. If it's between twenty and eighty, make it orange, and over eighty, make it right. green. All right. You know, kind of had the same idea. It sure did. But didn't but, have anything right. Where's our progress bar? Oh, you copied and copied. It it, it did it did it. Oh, uh, I hit it. I, right. Yeah, yeah. We just want the top part. That's why. Or I'm sorry, the bottom part. Right. Wait. Did I did I do yeah, that? It, yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think we that'd be a problem. Yeah, Did I we click the... too fast. I don't know what I I don't know how that happened. I think you removed too much because you had they had the variables up top. Yeah, let's do it one more time. Oops. Maybe say right away a color coded progress bar. There you go. So in this case, you see, like we're not referencing any field names. Like that would be even more specific and probably better, you know, but it still seems to determine it. Nice. I think that's what we're giving it. There we go. Did 
that that's makes sense. renderers. I think that's for the grid. That's yeah, that's that's the only integration in the grid right now. Right. I know that we well we're adding. I, I'm assuming it'll probably be in the next next update or, or or fairly after the next one. But the row body one will will be adding. If people do use that, and that's just that's another one kind of like tiles. It's it's HTML markup, so we'll add that there too. Um, all right. Anybody have any questions? But when all is said and done, the data sources, widgets, and even applications are constructed exactly as they are today, right? This is just helping you yes. build what you would have hand typed. Yes. As of right now, yes, that is true. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. just, we're getting, you know, we're, we're taking the responses and mapping it back into this, you know, nab format, right? Okay. Yeah. And like, you know, <clears throat> this first pass, we're, we, you know, we were just strategically going after areas of like where you would be doing more typing and more someone that might not know the JavaScript, the HTML that well, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we also have it like uh, there's I don't think we really need to show unless Sean you think so but like in within the app you know you, you have that execute script you can you can chat with the the assistant there too yeah probably yeah it's not really I mean probably not worth showing just because you know we're if you're using the execute script it means that typically there's something that you can't do in app builder. So. All right. So I don't really understand AI. So forgive me if my question doesn't make a whole lot of sense because our executive level probably doesn't understand either. And we're afraid of it. You know, the, our, I think our executive lo level is, is a little afraid of AI and we are being required to go before an executive review board if we want to introduce any AI into the company environment anywhere. What would we tell them to calm them down about hmm. your use of AI? I guess right away, none, no data, true data is being passed. Like what are, like data in your tables and stuff, none of that is being passed or, or used at, at all. Um, so if that's what they're, you know, in the case of like, in the case of this renderer here, <laughs> what, what, what is being passed is the, the, the column name and the label name period. Yep. And your, your, and also kind of the base instructions that, Hey, you know, you, the user, like the one that's using this and, and, and chatting, like, you know, within app build, you don't have to do this. We've already, we've already started this where it's like, you're working in uh, a renderer, right, of a column, and it's JavaScript, JavaScript specific. So whatever kind of code that you need to create, you you know you're you're creating it via JavaScript. But there's no company like data, you know, table data or anything being passed whatsoever. It's just the definition of the file, the name of the field, and the description of the field. Right. Same thing for data source. Um, same thing for tiles. Yeah, you know? every, I mean, yeah, everything. Yeah, we're we're not we're you know we don't we don't have there's no the the data would not be helpful. It, it wouldn't it wouldn't add to anything to make it more precise right. or anything. Yeah, yeah. thank I mean, you. So, someone will probably contact you for a little more in depth discussion yeah. at some point. If we can't calm them down and they say, no, you can't use it, do we just can never go into 6.3 or beyond or or what? Um, no, I mean, I, I think, you know, maybe probably within the next update, maybe we'll just add a setting so it just turns off so you don't see it mm -hmm. to just turn it off. Maybe I can uh, say a few things on this. I So, Bob, we're going to put out. I don't know, you call it a white paper or a 
a document explaining how this works. And so that from a technical perspective, so that you can present that to the, you know, your executive team, sort of explaining what Johnny and Sean said about, I think that's the biggest concern is like, okay, is my data actually going off site? And now I don't have control of that data anymore. The answer to that is definitely no. That's not to say we may not introduce features in the future that may want to send data if you want to do more advanced things, but you'd always get a chance to say, I don't want to do that, or I do want to do that. We will build that in. But right now you, you can't do that. So what it is sending, like they said, is call it metadata, right? So, you, you know, file definitions, descriptions of columns, things like that, uh, but never the actual data itself. Um, and if you're restricted from using it, we, CNX has full control centrally of the use of the valence assistant. So when you're making a request to valence assistant, it's going out to a CNX IBMI server in IBM's Dallas data center, and it's the, the request is being parsed out and handled and the response is sent back. So we can shut you off remotely. So right now, if you install 6.3, everybody that has 6.3 installed is enabled. So you're, you're running sort of, it's not really a trial mode. It's just like we haven't set any boundaries on its use right now. So it's just sort of like we're giving it to everybody so they can try it, right? Um, but we have the ability to turn you off. So you could just call us up and say, hey, don't let any of our systems use this service, right? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't let that keep you from installing 6.3, the fact that it has AI stuff, because we can just simply turn it off for you. And from a UI standpoint as well, where, where you, where you, you know, your users or, or whomever just could, uh, you know, wouldn't even see that prompt help me. Exactly. Or yeah, if you want to be more proactive about the use of it, every call that goes out is done to uh, vvsrv.cnxcorp.com. So like the outbound call goes to vvsrv.cnxcorp.com. So if you just set your outbound firewall to restrict calls to that address, then that would shut it down as well, right? The outbound call just simply wouldn't be allowed to go out. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think the white paper could be helpful. Do you have any idea when that might be available? Shooting for June 30th. Okay, thank you. Because we're supposed to be in like sort of trial mode throughout the end of the month, just like so that everybody has unlimited access. Right. I think that's it for the... Yeah, unless anybody else has any questions or anything like that, feel free if you're on. I think, okay. All right. Okay. All right, well, thanks for everybody for joining. And uh, yeah, you'll probably, you'll definitely see more updates in the future for this, but. All right, Sean. Richard, thanks. All right, everybody. Bye. All right, thanks. Have a good rest of your day now. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks, all.